In southwest Scotland, born and raised on the farmyard square, spent most of my days mucking out lamb and relaxing all cool and some. Nah. My name is Graham Parker, and this is the Hoof GP YouTube channel. If you like this kind of video, smash that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a cow which may be completely unfixable. She's got problems with both of her back feet, but even worse than that, she's got problems with both claws on one of those back feet. Follow me today and let's see what we can do for this poor cow. So as you can see straight away, this cow is not in great shape. She's really, really suffering right now because her feet are so sore, but I can't emphasize enough how well this farm is looked after. The cows are in fantastic condition and this cow in particular is a prime example of just exactly what lameness can lead to. She became lame four weeks ago and I trimmed her two weeks after that and she's just descended and descended. It's a vicious circle of being lame so she eats less and because she's eating less she becomes even more lame. So we're going to go ahead and do everything we can to get her back on the road to recovery. So this cow is actually already on a course of NSAIDs, which is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or basically drugs which help to relieve the pressure on that white line and reduce her pain. She's also had a course of antibiotics because she had the previous infection in that white line and she's been housed in a straw bedded pen, so it's nice and soft for her to lie on and stand on. So the farmer is literally doing everything in his power to make sure she's as comfortable as possible and it's my job to ensure that she does recover. Now you see this claw here has obviously been trimmed before and it's the perfect size now. So if I take anything away with the grinder I'm going to end up making it too thin but I need to get rid of the dirt. And the only way to do that is to scrape away with this. So my low torch is actually broken today. Um, I soaked it by accident and got it minging. But this glue will work without the low torch. But it won't work with the orange TP blocks because they need to be hit up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wooden block and we'll revisit her again in two weeks time and replace the wooden block. All you do is if you don't have a low torch you give it a wee mix on the actual sole itself, allow it to dry a wee second. Good dry block, give it a squidge around. And obviously I'm going to allow this more time to dry than it normally would just because there's no heat in the block and there's no excess heat in the horn itself so it'll need a little bit longer to dry. So whilst that's drying, this wall also here actually has dermatitis on it as well and that's why it's prevented it from healing it last time. So I told you guys in a different video that I was actually using this paste and it's from Embryonics UK. I don't know if they watch the videos or what but they've actually created an iodine based paste so for me that's perfect because I'm always banging on about how good iodine is but obviously if you wrap it, put it in a wrap, leave it on for a couple of days it's really going to penetrate that wound and this obviously hasn't healed last time so that's exactly what I'm going to do right now but obviously the wrap needs removed after two days at the very most so you just put a good amount on there squidge it right onto the lesion itself And you really need to remember that we're not wrapping this to keep it clean. We're wrapping it purely to keep that product in place. So it doesn't need much and it definitely doesn't need to be tight. That's it. So I've had people in the past say, oh, why did you wrap this one? Why didn't you wrap the other one? What's the difference? It's really difficult to answer that because there's so many variables that can come into play. 
if the farm's particularly dirty, for instance, um, it might want wrap because that'll really make it penetrate more. If it's a clean farm, just iodine itself will dry out the lesion and help it heal, and you wouldn't need a wrap at all. Um, if there's a, not a great enough height difference, for example, between here and here, a wrap is going to make that worse. So there'll be pressure on here, so I couldn't wrap that. Um, if there's no dermatitis present, it's very rare that I'll wrap anything, to be honest. Um, when you're wrap, treating dermatitis, you're not actually trying to kill the dermatitis, you're trying to sort of keep it at bay for a couple of days so that the body's immune system can really get a chance to attack it and kill it itself. And now that foot's done, we'll crack on with the other one and see if there's anything wrong with that as well because she is really lean and it makes sense to me that that's partly maybe why this one isn't healing. So it's Monday morning right now and Wednesday is when Greg starts and I can't wait um, to get him here. He's not been trimming for a year now so he's going to need refreshed, he's going to um, take it slowly so the first day we probably won't even have him trimming and we'll just see but I'm super excited for him to be here. Now this is bleeding, but it's not intentional. Obviously you can't see exactly what's underneath the horn. And all you can go by is what you've been taught. It's unfortunate this is bleeding, but to be honest, if I hadn't removed that loose horn, then she wouldn't be gonna heal. And trust me, I'm gonna make her heal. If it's the last thing I do. There is enough height on this to take a little bit off and I really want to put a block on to get that right off the ground. How I feel for her, but she won't feel the same for me. I've got this picture in my mind. It's just the two of us, just the two of us. Now, if it turns out there's also a problem here, so we need to avoid this as well. But I want a block on it, so what do we do? Well, I'll just show you. So again. I don't have a blowtorch, so I'm going to put this on. Give it a good mix and extra time. I'm going to avoid the area that has got the problem and I'm going to put extra glue in here where this modelled area is. But I need to give it a mix, otherwise it won't set properly. So again, I'm gonna wrap it with Embryonics Fancy Paste. Um, they haven't sponsored me to say that, by the way. I'm just telling you that's what it is. Because it's got dermatitis on it, and that's partly why it hasn't healed last time. I only use around a third of a wrap, by the way, each time I wrap a foot. And again, I'm gonna fully wait until that block has cured and give it extra time compared to what I would normally do because I haven't been able to touch. So you see what the problem is here in the white line? And obviously if we leave it like that, there's gonna be pressure on it causing big problems. So this cow's number is 812. I'm gonna revisit her in two weeks time. How do you guys think she's gonna be doing? 
let me know in the comments exactly what you predict. Go on, lass, go. I hate it when they're like this. It's not good, is it? But hopefully, now we know what the problem was and that it had dermatitis on her foot, we can really get it solved. Can't wait for the update on this one, personally. So like I said, I'm going to revisit this cow within this week to unwrap those two back feet myself because I want to see exactly the results that that pasty kind of stuff from Embryonics UK does for her foot. And then we're going to revisit her one week after that for a retrim and to make sure those blocks are still in shape and they're still attached to her foot. Anyway, like I said guys, if you like this video, please keep subscribing. Those numbers really encourage me. It doesn't mean that much to you guys clicking that little subscribe button, but trust me, to me, it really does. Thank you and good night.